Unboxing a brand new in box Casio Windows CE Industrial PDA, the IT70. I'm not sure if this is the color model or the grayscale model. Uh, the eBay seller showed the color model in the unbox photo, but the IT70 N30E is supposed to be grayscale. This is brand new in box, it's never been opened. All of it made in Japan. And this is a somewhat durable PDA, has rubber seals over all of the port doors and whatnot. So let's go ahead and open it up. First, we got this uh, Casio syncing cable, has some Japanese on it along with English. Interestingly, the cable is also made in Japan, not China. So here is the box. It's a very plain box. It's nothing on the back. Of course, it's an industrial computer, so industry they don't really care about frivolities like uh, fancy marketing on the box. There is no tape on the box, although the seller has assured me it is new. Let's move this out of the way. So this cardboard comes up. Oh yeah, it's brand new. Some kind of sticky pad. And this is most definitely the grayscale model. Here's the PDA. Nothing like a brand new pocket PC. You look at that. Not even a single mark on it. Charging port. Here's the back. Made in Japan. Let's see what comes with it in the box. Let's tape down. There we go. This is the extended battery cover. So it comes with both covers. There's two different batteries you could order with this system. And here is the paperwork. I'm trying to cover up that Windows CE 3.1 key. Active sync. Here's the user's manual. I love this font. Good choice, Casio. User manual for how to use Pocket PC, Windows CE. And this is the getting started sheet. Read this first. Check that everything's included. It is. I don't think I got the hand strap with it though. Maybe it's in the other box. Maybe it's in this box, I just haven't opened it up enough yet. Oh yeah, there's the hand strap. That looks like a pretty decent quality one. What else is in here? Oh, here's a clock battery. Probably dead by now, but you never know since it wasn't in the device. That's it for the box. It's empty. So let's take a look at the device. It's pretty nice. It has a nice, somewhat clicky keypad. On the side here, we have a headphone jack. Nice rubber seal. On the back, you got your stylus. It's a pretty serious size stylus. Here's the PCMCA slot, not PCMCA, sorry, yeah. Compact Flash slot. I said that because uh, Compact Flash can work in a PCMCA slot. On this side, we got some buttons. We got the tape recorder buttons, and scroll up and down or volume up and down, infrared. That's it on this device. There is really not a lot of buttons or ports. There's the uh, serial connector, also behind a nice rubber flap. So to open the battery bay, you 
flip this switch, you pry up on the cover and it comes out. This unit did not come with a battery. I had to buy another one that was also claimed to be new, but it wasn't in the box. Uh, that one has a color screen. I'll show that one a little later. Next, let's unbox the DT825 ADPU, otherwise known as the power supply. That's a, that's a pretty nice brick. Made in Japan. Very nice. And next, here's the here's the whole kit. Lastly, we're going to unpackage the charging station. It's actually bigger than the whole PDA. Got to move all the stuff out of the way. There we go. Some kind of um, mounting hardware, screws and washers. Mm, that's it. The charging station is absolutely gigantic compared to the PDA. The PDA just sits down in there like that. It's supposed to clip into place. There's some more mounting hardware I have to put on this, but yeah, that's the charging station. It has a nice solid on-off switch. And on the back you got holes for mounting it on a wall. Here's where the AC adapter connects in the top. That's all there is to this. And this is everything that came with it. You got your active sync software, the charging dock, the PDA, manual, a clock battery, a wrist strap, an expanded battery door, and some mounting hardware. Here is a comparison between the grayscale and the color unit. This is the color unit I bought to get a battery for this. And they're basically the same exact thing, same color plastic, just different screen, same CPU, same memory. I'm eager to see if this truly new inbox grayscale one will fire up. It's been charging for a bit. Nope, not yet. I suppose I need to wait. Got it to start after some time charging in the cradle. It was actually cheaper to get a whole brand new color one than it was to get a battery just for the grayscale one. Both of these are brand new, right? And of course this one is the one I unboxed. This one did not come in the original box but it was supposedly never used and it, it definitely looks like it was never used. So what do you have to do to get one of these going? Well, you have to install the clock battery. And to do that, you actually have to unscrew a panel on the bottom here. You see those two screws, one of which is near my thumb? You undo those, and then that little door comes out, and the CR2032 clock battery should be accessible. Okay, the color one is fully charged with the clock battery replaced and ready to go. Um, I think it's time to take a look at Pocket PC 2000, otherwise known as Windows CE 3.0. Uh, the main screen takes a departure from the former handheld PC version of Windows CE, which had a Windows 95 style start menu at the bottom. Instead, you have this um, home screen with the start menu at the top. The home screen was present in the older versions, but uh, it didn't try to be its own thing. It tried to mimic um, desktop PCs. So it will show your upcoming appointments, emails, and any tasks. You got the calendar date, which is not set correctly. I haven't bothered to. Here's the start menu. You can see I have multiple applications running on the device at the same time. Let's take a look at settings. System. About. And this is a MIPS VR4122 with 32 megs of memory. No expansion card in the slot yet. This is a Casio IT700, I gave that the device name. And I copyright details for the software. You go to memory. You can allocate storage and program memory out of the RAM, typical Windows CE stuff. 
It looks like from the factory it comes about 50-50 split. There is no storage card installed at the moment. And I just canceled out all the running programs. The screen on this is actually really nice. It's an active matrix display. And you can adjust the contrast however much you'd like it. This looks good to me. Brightness. This is on battery power. It gets pretty bright. But we'll leave it that way for battery life. And it has an auto dim function. Okay. Power screen shows you how much battery you have left and uh, how much is left in the backup battery as well. Approximation. Sounds. You can customize what the buttons do. You can customize the input method. It has a character recognizer or a keyboard. You can choose from either. You can customize the menus, what appears in the start menu. Performance of this PDA is actually pretty snappy, I gotta say. This uh, MIPS CPU is not half bad. Here's Windows Media Player. You can play MP3s. As a calendar, this is a standard calendar. Contact book, it's pretty standard. An email inbox if you um, have a modem or a network card. Internet Explorer, it loads this uh, stock page, this built-in splash screen. There is no network connection on this PDA as of now, so I can't demonstrate this browser. has a note application. Of course you can draw notes. You can also record a voice note. Testing voice recording of the Cassiopeia IT700. Testing voice recording of the Cassiopeia IT700. Actually, it sounds really good uh, compared to older PDAs I have. It's pretty clear. The Tasks app, it lets you create tasks that need to be completed. Set a status, due date, when should it occur, should there be a reminder, and the priority. Kind of like a project management tool. We have Pocket Word. You probably don't want to type a Word document on this. It would be... Pretty painful. I mean, you can make a quick edit to a document that you've been working on. I wouldn't want to write a whole thing on this. Tiny keyboard. And you can, of course, move things to folders. There's also templates, like a memo template, to-do list template. It's kind of redundant because the operating system has a to-do uh, app. We have Pocket Excel, which could be useful because this device actually has a num numeric keypad. The device does not sit flat on the table. Here's the calculator. It's a standard Windows C calculator. It has Microsoft money for um, managing finances.
It's an account register. Looking wake investment register as well. Payees. It's kind of like an electronic checkbook. The file explorer is for seeing the file system of your device. All those documents we just made are present here, including the built-in audio recording. You can, of course, open files from the file manager. You can open the Windows folder. There's all the files of Windows CE. Only comes with Solitaire as a game. I honestly have no idea how to play Solitaire. It came with these three tools. I have no idea what FLCE is, but it looks like it has something to do with the um, IR. Flash format allows you to format a flash disk. And I do not want to do that right now. And card backup will allow you to back up your memory card or flash disk. This device actually has two compact flash slots. One that's easily accessible and then one you have to take out the battery to get to. So feasibly you could have dual cards and back up to the other card. And of course, connections for Active Sync, both IR and Serial. That's about it for um, Windows CE version 3 or Pocket PC 2000. There isn't too much to it by default. It's quite a nice PDA operating system. There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, it's navigatable, it's reasonably speedy. It just doesn't have that many features built in. However, it is much better than its predecessor. My apologies, I did not mean to refer to Windows CE for handhelds. That actually refers to the um, the palm top computers. Those were actually pretty decent. I am referring to the uh, Windows CE version for what Microsoft called a palm size PC. This was the predecessor of Pocket PC. And palm size PC um, looked a lot more like Windows 95. It had a lot less features built in than uh, Pocket PC 2000, and it was only on the market for a very short amount of time. I have another Casio that runs that piece of software that I'll be showing in a video at another point. So that's about it for the color Casio Pia Pocket PC. Let's take a look at the grayscale one. So here is the grayscale Casio Pia E10. As you can see, the grayscale screen is really difficult to film, especially without the backlight. To turn on the backlight, you push the FN key and 7. Come on. There we go. When you turn on the backlight, the screen gets a lot better. It's this really nice, vivid green. The, the, back, the backlight makes this screen usable. Uh, without the backlight, it's basically unusable indoors because of how reflective it is. It's the same operating system as on the other device, completely identical, just everything is in 16 grays instead of uh, color.